Good afternoon, everyone. So welcome to Badger's exam prep. My name is Naveen, and today we'll be looking at CAT 2024. We'll be doing quantitative aptitude arithmetic, and this is part three of arithmetic. So before we begin, I would like everyone to look into the pinned comment in the chat. Uh, if you guys have any queries regarding any of the courses of CAT, you can uh, complete the given form and we will get in uh, we'll, we'll get in touch with you as soon as possible please make sure that you put in your contact number and the email address correct okay so uh, let's begin with the first question for the day a trader makes a profit equal to the selling price of 30 articles on selling 50 of the articles what percentage profit did he make in the transaction so there are a couple of things that we need to know beforehand we solve this okay so the first thing is that the profit is given as uh, selling price minus cost price. And the second thing is the profit percentage. If you need this, you need SP by CP. So you need the ratio. Okay, so profit percentage is given as SP by CP minus one. So if I want to solve this question, I will have to read the first statement very carefully and understand. So it says, when we sell 50 articles, the profit made obviously on those 50 articles is equal to selling price of 30 articles. So we can say that the profit made on 50 articles is same as it's equal to right. It's right there given equal to selling price of 30 articles. Now profit is given as SP minus CP. And the words on, off, than, they are generally, you know, replaced with the multiplication sign. So we'll have into 50, that gives you SP into 30. We can get rid of the zeros, bring all the SPs on one side, all the CPs on the other side. So we will have uh, two times SP, and this will result in five times of CP, or we will have SP by CP, that will result in five by two, which is 2.5. So if I put this in the formula, I'll get profit percentage is equal to 2.5 minus 1, which is 1.5. This is not percentage. If you want percentage, you will have to multiply it by 100. So it gives you 150%. So this will result in option D. Okay, let's look at the second question. A bird is flying at a speed of 15 km per hour parallel to the ground towards north. Suddenly a storm started blowing at a speed of 10 km per hour from the north. How long will the bird take to reach his nest which is 10 km away? A very straightforward form, uh, 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 question. So if there is a bird that is flying towards the north and its speed is 15 kmph and if there is a wind that is flowing uh, in the opposite direction of the word from north right this is north at the speed of 10 kmph so the bird will experience drag okay so the bird will not be able to move at the speed of 15 km per hour bird will actually start moving effectively at only 5 km per hour because if it tries to cover 15 then 10 of that kilometers will be pushed back because of the wind so his uh, the birds effective distance only five kilometers every hour and since the bird has to cover 10 kilometers so the time that the bird is going to take will be the distance between them which is 10 kilometers right divided by five kilometer per hour which will result in two hours now since the question is talking about minutes so two hours is nothing but two times 60 because one hour contains 60 minutes so this will result in 120 minutes and 120 minutes will result in option D, right? Okay, next question. A 400 liter solution of milk and water contains 30% milk. How much pure milk should be added to this solution so that the resultant solution contains 60% milk? Now this question can be solved in at least three to four different ways. Uh, since we are looking at percentage today, arithmetic, we can solve it using that. We can also use the concept of uh, uh, averages, allegation, right, uh, ratios, a lot of different ways. So how much of pure milk should be added? So we are saying suppose x liters 
of pure milk was added. So if I look at milk, right, or we can look at water, it's going to be easier that way. So if I look at water, how much of water did we have initially? If 30% contains milk out of 400 liters, can we say 70% of 400 liters is water? Right? This much of water will remain same. This is quantity. This is not percentage now. We have multiplied with magnitude or percentage. It results in magnitude. So this is the magnitude. And this will remain same uh, even if you pour in milk. Because when you are pouring in milk, in the new volume, milk quantity increased. But the volume of water stayed the same. So this is going to be, since 60% is milk, that is going to give us 40% of 400 plus x liters. Much simpler because uh, now this is not percentages anymore, it's ratio. So we can get rid of these zeros, then we can get rid of this 4. So this will result in 700 is equal to 400 plus x or this will result in x as 300. So option A. Right? Two, three steps solution. Next question, Ravina invested rupees A in a bank offering 10% compound interest for 3 years compounded annually. Find the value of A if the interest earned by Ravina is rupees 15,888 after 3 years. So since we are talking about compound interest and compounded annually, right? So suppose, uh, uh, suppose it's given that A is the amount that she invested and at the rate of 10% for 3 years. This is the formula for amount under compound interest. If you want to look into the only the interest part, we'll have to subtract that A and this is given as 15,888. Now, why did we have three? We had three because we were talking about three years. So in the case of compound interest, whatever is the tenure in years or the number of times the calculation is supposed to happen, that goes in the power. So this becomes A into 1.1, right? 10% is 0.1. 1 plus 0.1 is 1.1 uh, cube minus a and this will result in 15,888 and uh, this is going to be 1.331 a minus a and this is 15,888 or this gives you 0.331 a is equal to 1588 and this gives you a is equal to 15 triple 8 divided by 0 0.331 now this is not a difficult task all you have to see is 1 into what number will result in an 8 that will be the first non zero digit from the right hand side so 8 times hona chahiye to yahan 8 hoga so the only option that has an 8 as the uh, rightmost non zero digit is option b so it will go 48,000 times. So this is how we save time and calculation by using common sense. So see, B becomes our answer, 48. Next one. An apple seller brings apples from a farm and then sells them in his shop. He uses trucks to bring apples. He buys the apples from the farm at rupees 200 per kg. Each truck brings one quintal. Now, quintal is 100 kgs, okay? And charges rupees 10,000. For what amount should he sell the apples so that he can make a 20% profit overall? Right? So, if we... Let's talk about 1 kg, okay? Let's not dive into uh, you know 100 kgs or something like that 1 kg ki baat karte hai. so can we say that the cost price is 200 rupees for 1 kg now his charges for 100 kgs is 10,000 rupees right that would mean 100 rupees is his charge right so the, can we say the total cost total kharcha jo usko padta hai, that is 300 rupees Right now, if he wants to make a 20% profit overall, so 300 rupees is the cost, 20% more he wants on 300, right? Cost 
uh, profit percentage and uh, loss percentage these are calculated on cost so cost is 300 20 percent more 20 percent of 300 is 60 so this will result in 360 so can we say 360 rupees per kg he should be selling so 360 option b becomes our answer okay uh, so people who are watching this uh, i'll i would like to remind you guys if you are interested in um, uh, you know look if you are if you are looking for uh, uh, preparatory program for cat and other mba entrances um, there is a link that is pinned in the chat uh, it's a counseling form you can give your contact number and your email address and we will get in touch with you you can ask whatever queries you have regarding the courses the fees what are the giveaways Okay, make sure that you put in your uh, contact number correctly. Okay, next, Matthew had rupees 4800 with him. He invested this amount in two schemes, A and B, with the same rate of simple interest at 8% per annum. If the interest received from scheme A at the end of four years is the same as this received from scheme B at the end of five years, find the amount invested by Matthew in scheme A. So we have two schemes, scheme A and scheme B. Scheme A is at 8% simple interest and tenure is 4 years. Scheme B is 8% simple interest but tenure is 5 years. Now the question says interest received is same. right? So the interest in the case of A, it's given as PRT upon 100. So I will say one principal P1 into 8% into 4. And from the second one, this is going to be P2. 8% into 5. Well, I'm not very fond of 1 and 2 since we are dealing with P, I mean A and B type. So let's write P and PB so that whenever we see PA, it's understood that we are talking about principle under, you know, scheme A. These are the simple interest formulas, right? PRT by 100. If I equate it, I will be uh, doing the exact same thing that is asked or that is given in the question. So from here, we can see that uh, the common part, which is 8%, uh, it vanishes, right? So this will result in PA by PB is going to be 5 by 4, right? Since we are talking about scheme A, so can we say principle of A is 5 by 9th of the total amount, right? So we will be able to take care of a 3 and here we are going to have 1600. Now 16 into 5 is 80 and then we will have two zeros and divided by 3. 8000 by 3. Now 8000 by 3 if we solve this, this is going to be 2666 2 by 3. So option A. Scheme A, option A. Pure coincidence. Okay, next one, A and B start doing a work together at the same time. If the efficiency of B is one third of the efficiency of both of them together and A takes 30 days to do the work alone, how many days will they need to finish the work together? So it is given that efficiency of B is one third the efficiency of both of them together. Okay, so how we interpret such an equation? Samne jo dikhara that is your efficiency of B and denominator mein jo dikh hai, that is the efficiency of A and B. From here, we obviously know that efficiency of B is 1, right? This is 1. So this results in efficiency of A being 2. Such that efficiency of A is 2, efficiency of B is 1, efficiency of B is one third of total, right? Now, it is given that A takes 30 days. So, A takes 30 days. So, the number of units of work or the amount of work that he can do is 60. Same work B also has to do, right? Uh, along with A. So, they will be doing together in how many days? So, 1 nahi hoga. Since they are doing it together, it's going to be 2 plus 1 now into number of days. So remember that work is given as uh, efficiency of people into duration. Okay. 
So from here, you will be getting the value of D as 20 and 20 is our option C. So if they work together, they will finish it in 20 days. What A was able to do in 30 days. Okay. Next question. In a zoo, there are some lions and some tigers. A lion eats 50 kg of meat every day and a tiger eats 60 kg of meat every day. If the amount of meat the zoo needs to procure per day is 54 kg per animal and the average number of lions and tigers is 5, find the number of lions. Now, this is a question again which can be solved using uh, linear equation, uh, averages, allegation, right? S since there is no percentage that you see in the language, so we will prefer not using linear equation because that's not required. Allegation would be a faster approach in this case. So if we talk about tigers and then if we talk about uh, uh, lions. So a lion eats 50 kg of meat every day and a tiger eats 60 kg of meat every day. And if we combine them, right, it is 54 kg on an average. Now using allegation, you take the difference of 60 and 54, write it over here. You take the difference of 50 and 54, you write it over here. This is the ratio in which uh, the number of tigers and lions are distributed. Now, this is a ratio, right? This is not the actual value. So it can be 4 is to 6, it could be 2 is to 3, it could be 20 and 30, it could be 400 and 600. Any ratio as long as it is equal to 4 is to 6 will result in the same average of 54 kg per animal. Now, which one out of these is going to be the number of lions? Is it 6? Is it 3? For that, we are given average number of lions and tigers is 5. So if we take 4 and 6 and if we calculate the average, this will give us 5. While the average of 2 and 3 will be only 2.5. So obviously, we are not dealing with any other ratio or any other values but rather 4 and 6. So if you look at this, the number of lions which is asked is going to be 6. Niche jo likha hua hai, that is the number of lions. So whatever you see in the same column represents the quantity of that particular value. So this will result in option C, which is 6 lions are there. Right? Okay. So pretty simple questions, pretty simple approaches. Uh, these are some very basic questions that do come in exams, not necessarily in CAD, but SNAP, MHCET, um, NMAT, right? Other exams. So you have to be very fluent in such basic level questions so that you can attempt moderate or difficult ones. The concept should be clear. There should not be errors while you're solving. It should be smooth, okay? And before you write down something, you should know what are the different ways of solving the, the particular question and decide depending upon how the language is given. Because it's not about solving questions, it's about solving questions faster or quicker than everybody else, without making mistake, of course, right? So you can enroll into our MHCT specialized course. The course uh, simply uh, costs 4,800, right? You can download our app from Google Play. It is, uh, the link is given in the description. From there, uh, once you go to the dashboard, you will find the MHCET uh, program. You can click on it and you can pay and you can enroll in the course. So make sure that you enroll it as soon as possible because the batch is going to start very, very soon. Uh, the classes for MHCET has already begun for, uh, you know, uh, practice level. Okay. Concept wise, it's going to start. All India Open Mock uh, for MHCET is also, has also started. It started on 19th and it will continue up to 20th Jan. So it's a 10 day window. Make sure you attempt this uh, all in the open mock free. You All you have to do is register for this. The registration link is also can, it can also be found um, on the app itself. Okay. It will help you identify your D-Day strategy. It will help you benchmark where you stand. Okay. Pan India, you will get to know your strengths and weaknesses and what are the different level of questions that come in the exam. So it's very, very crucial, very important to write mocks before the actual exams, okay? Tomorrow, uh, Mr. Srinivas is going to take a workshop, which is going to be a live interactive free workshop on the app. He's going to discuss about 12 months to CAT, the quant strategy, because uh, it's not exactly 12 months, it's now 11 months. 
the exam is going to be uh, on uh, November uh, this year, right? In November this year, the last Sunday. So tomorrow at 11 a.m., make sure that you attend this workshop. So for this also, you can register. The link is given in the description and it is also available on the app. Okay, you can also click on the button which says talk to our counselor on the home page of our app and you can get in touch with us uh, very soon regarding any course or any material. Okay, uh, you can check out our social media handles and pages. You can also join our telegram channel which is badges exam prep for MBA. Okay, do follow and subscribe our uh, Instagram, Facebook uh, and uh, YouTube channels. Well, that's all for today. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you will be there for the next session of this series. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.